Fred, if I have to pick a series of questions that are the deepest probes of what this universe is all about, are there other intelligences would be certainly one of them that I would pick. And the thing that strikes me is, is, that, is that either answer, or maybe there, are, maybe there are three kinds of answers. One, that, that the universe is teeming with life because there's so many stars, and now we know that stars have so many planets, at least one planet per star, 100 billion stars in, the, 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 in our, our galaxy, or maybe more, and gargantuan number of planets. That's one answer. So life has to be ubiquitous. Second answer is, on the other extreme, is that human kind of intelligence or intel high level intelligence is not only rare, but has it, we're the only ones. And then, of course, some say that, that its intelligence is rare, but we're not the only one. So from your standpoint in studying the development of exoplanets and the huge uh, increase in them, uh, how do you see this question of alien intelligences? Well, I guess... The, the honest answer is I don't have an incredible insight into the question of intelligence itself, but we can start to, um, we can start to constrain the astronomical parts of your question. Okay. So one of the, the real revolutions in the last decade and a half is the discovery of exoplanets. And as you pointed out, it's probably the case that up to half of all stars have planets of some kind which means that the total number of planets in the galaxy is order of magnitude comparable to the number of stars in the galaxy. So there's lots of planets out there. And then if you ask a more fine-tuned question, namely, how many stars have Earth-like planets, where the, an Earth-like planet is, with, say, within a factor of two of Earth size and in a planet, planetary orbit that has a surface temperature that's close to ours so water can be liquid on the surface, then the, the projection suggests that that number might be five or even 10%. So the total number of habitable, in quote, planets is huge. It's a big number. It's a big number. What's also interesting is that those are actually not the most common liquid water environments in the galaxy. Hmm. If you were to make an Earth in the outer solar system, it would be frozen on the surface. But the internal radioactivity would keep hmm. liquid layers of water hmm. in liquid form hmm. underneath the ice sheets. Hmm. And there's an internal energy source. Hmm. Now, the internal energy source is relatively small. On our Earth, it's 10,000 times less than the power that we get from the sun, mm -hmm. but it's non-trivial. It will keep liquid water oceans under ice-covered planets. Mm -hmm. And those planets can live anywhere. They don't have mm -hmm. to live in a particular mm -hmm. zone. Mm -hmm. So the number of liquid water environments with energy is enormous. It's really the billions and billions. Mm. Okay, so at, at least the first term in this equation, which yeah. of course uh, uh, yes, Frank Drake made. Yes, the, the, the Drake equation, yes. Is, is now not speculation. You know for sure that there are these numbers of planets, which is really remarkable. Right. The astronomical parts of the Drake equation have basically been nailed, mm. and mm. they're plentiful. And they're big. So the, and, and it's not just the number of planets, but also the number of liquid water environments mm -hmm. um, are probably very large. So the next question is one of life. And I'm a physicist and an astronomer, and I'm not a biologist, so I have to come clean and tell you I can't give you an inside look into the odds of life. Mm. I would like to think, nonetheless, that the chances of life developing in a liquid water environment with energy would be relatively high. And the reason I say that is um, partly wishful thinking, but partly I think that life is ultimately a physical process driven by the laws of physics. And the laws of physics are the same here and everywhere in the universe. It would be remarkable if they only were successful in producing life here mm. on this planet. And also, if you look at the history of life on this planet, one-celled organisms appeared on our Earth relatively early mm. in our history, mm. which, given that that's the only data point we have, it's uncomfortable saying anything, but let me go ahead and say something <laughs> anyway. What that says to me is that the production of one celled organisms probably wasn't that hard because they appeared so soon. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens next is the big question mark. Yeah, and many uh, biologists uh, uh, would put the dividing line between, not between non life and life, but between life and building up into, into multicellular creatures and especially the, the, the gap to intelligence. Right. Well, there's several milestones. You have to have a, um, a jump from one celled organisms to multi celled organisms, then you have to have a jump from multi-celled organisms to basically animals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you have to have a jump from animals to intelligence. Mm -hmm. And then you have to have yet another jump from intelligence to technology. Mm -hmm. 
Because if you ask the question that you began with, where are all the aliens, yeah. you don't just have to be intelligence. Whales in space won't do it. Yeah. You need technology as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's a big unknown. And unfortunately, I don't have any particular <laughs> insight into it. Well, the one data point that we do have is that we don't have evidence. Now, uh, absence of evidence is not uh, evidence of absence, but still, there is no evidence that one can see, and there seems to have been enough time uh, if there were even one civilization that had all of the things that you said, including technology. To they, be clear, you're talking about the Fermi paradox. Yeah. Um, Enrico Fermi famously yeah. said, if there's aliens out there, where are they? And the idea is that if there were lots of intelligent civilizations, it only takes one to colonize yeah. the galaxy. Right. And given that there are civilizations, or at least there could be civilizations that are billions of years older than ours, that's a lot of time to colonize the galaxy, and yet it hasn't happened. So there are many, many ways out of the Fermi paradox, um, but none of them are completely um, satisfying, and none of them are completely agreed upon. <laughs>